Hello YouTube, Proxy here with another video regarding what we know so far about Ashes of Creation. And this episode is all about crafting. Yes, an important video for a lot of you guys out there. In fact, some of you are looking forward to this game specifically for this feature and there's quite a bit to cover. But before we start, here's a generic disclaimer that the game is still in development. And all of the things in this video are subject to change and might not fully represent the end result. So with that out of the way, let's begin. First, let's discuss how the crafting system works mechanically. Thanks to information revealed by Steven, we know that crafting in Ashes of Creation will be in fact a Trinity system. Now to explain what a Trinity system is to those that do not know, it's a system where three separate groups or categories work together in synergy to complete a given task or end result. In most MMORPGs, a Trinity system is usually used to describe the synergy between healer, DPS and tank roles within the game, giving them a dedicated and set role within combat. However, in Ashes of Creation this is applied to crafting instead. Professions will be separated into three different categories. Gathering, which will be the primary method of gaining raw materials. Processing, which will be how raw materials will be transformed into usable goods for crafters. And finally, crafting, which will be used to produce the final product. When you make your character, you will need to decide what profession you want to focus on. And to do so, you are given three points. Gathering professions will cost one point each. This means you can take a total of three gathering professions. Processing will cost 2 points, meaning you can take a processing skill and complement it with one gathering skill. And finally, crafting professions will consume all 3 points. And here I will provide a few examples of what this means. You could use your 3 points to choose 3 1 point gathering professions, thus becoming a fisherman, a miner and a farmer. For example, you could instead use the 3 points to be a miner for 1 point and use 2 points to be an ingot maker, so you can gather and process raw ore by yourself, but lose the ability to gather a lot more resources. And finally, you could just spend all 3 of your points to focus on one specific craft, but then you would also need to rely on others to gather resources and process them for you. This will create a crafting trinity system which will mean these professions will rely on each other to produce an end result, whether it be potions, armor, weapons or something else. Crafters will need processed materials, processors will need raw materials, and gatherers will need gear, equipment and potions to access harder to obtain materials for crafters to use. Essentially, these three roles will need each other to produce craftable objects. This will most likely tie in with the family system Steven wants to create for the game, and families can organise between them how to set up their crafting empire, or even allow guilds to try and organise this in a much larger industrial machine. Ok, so how will the crafting occur in this sense? Well, I actually provided an example of this in my caravan video, and it's important to remember that caravans will be quite important for crafters. It's how they will get their materials to locations they need to be delivered to, so they can be processed and then shipped off to be crafted into exciting new things. In a way, crafting will flow in a similar fashion to how things work in real life. Resources are often gathered in one location, it will be sent to a factory nearby to be processed and end up being shipped to another location to be finally be crafted. If you have never watched my caravan video, then here's a quick rundown on what will happen in game. Though bear in mind this is just a basic example, the entire thing is much more complex than this. Let's say you mine 1000 iron ore which can only be found in tier 1 regions. That ore then must be crafted into iron bars which can only be found in tier 2 regions, which then can only be used in making different grades of plate armor in tier 3, 4, 5 and 6 regions. These caravans will be the only route by which you can transit these goods from region to region, since a player's carrying capacity for these goods are extremely limited. Now this is just a basic example. But the reverse of this is also true, that resources found in tier 2 to 6 regions will also be need to send to various places to be processed and crafted. And it will take a lot of time to find out what is optimal in this regard and also the nodes are slowly changing over time. So what might be optimal for one month to craft and sell might be inefficient the next month. Ok so that is a basic rundown of how crafting system works so far. It's not all the details, but it's all we know so far currently. And we will most likely have to wait for a developer blog to know more. So what kinds of professions can we expect to have? Well there does seem to be quite a lot of crafting and gathering professions in Ashes of Creation. We have nowhere near a full list of what there might be, but I have made a small list of some of the professions that have been mentioned so far. Herbalist, Miner, Lumberjack, Farmer, Fisherman, Cooking, Breeding and Taming, Armorsmith, Weaponsmith, Blacksmith, Alchemist and Carpentry. And this is nowhere near a complete list. This is just some of the job roles Steven has mentioned so far, and I imagine there will be many more to add to this list in the future. And all these professions will be referred to as Artisan Classes, and will receive XP separately from your combat class. In a sense this would enable you to level up a character for crafting and gathering only, and completely ignoring the combat aspect of the game if you chose to do so. 
Though this does not mean you can avoid conflict and PvP completely. But choosing to try and avoid direct conflict is definitely an option for most pacifists out there. Okay, so that's a rundown of the classes we know so far. Will we learn from static recipes and craft from them, or is the system more dynamic, and allow you to combine several resources together to get a random result? Well, in Ashes of Creation, both of these systems will be utilised. Some items will be crafted in the form of using a recipe, and others will take a more dynamic approach. And to follow this up, crafting recipes to level up won't be a repetitive process. So if you are expecting that you can queue up a thousand iron swords, come back in a few hours and expect to be a master swordsmith, then that's most likely not going to work. However, the details on how they will actually achieve this kind of system is currently unknown to us. Okay, so you are a crafter, you have made your goods, now what can you do with them? Well, you can always give them to your friendly neighbourhood reaper, but most of you will want to either use them yourself or sell them. But where can you sell your goods in Ashes of Creation? Well, you do in fact have quite a few options. You can sell your goods using the local marketplaces, and these marketplaces will be region based. Now you could sell your gear directly at the same place you crafted it, but alternatively you could send your goods elsewhere or to another town to be sold. For example, a lot of crafters who are alchemists craft and sell potions in your current town. This keeps the price low, but competitive. However, if you were to move your potions to a metropolis which was a few regions away, the adventurers there might be in need of a large supply of potions and will be willing to pay more for them. This means crafters can either choose to sell locally for a quick profit, so they can get back to crafting sooner, or ship large supply of items to new locations to make more profit per item. This makes for quite a cool option for an economy, and it's good news for those people who like to trade. However, the marketplaces are not the only place a player can choose to sell goods. Players can also sell their wares from an NPC shop, that they can place in or outside their own home. Yes, that's right, players can have their own shop within a node. And this shop will reflect the player's own abilities as a crafter. And adventurers will be able to buy and sell things as well as provide a crafting or repair service via this NPC, even while you are offline. And there are still more mechanics to come and be fully explained much later in development regarding player shops. So it's going to be really cool and interesting to see what we can do with them to turn a profit. Oh, and to finally finish up about crafting and what we know about it, is that gear will eventually need to be repaired by a player crafter it seems. This seems to be aimed at keeping crafting relevant even at the latest stages of the game, and most likely an important reason not to get on the bad side of every crafter in game, by mindlessly murdering and stealing from them, because ultimately you're going to need to repair your stuff at some point. Okay, so that's pretty much most things we know about crafting so far in game, and crafting seems to be a fairly strong and important focus of the game. Unlike other MMOs where crafting is a side venture or merely a time sink, Crafting in Ashes of Creation will be the main source of gear progression for the server. Players, families, guilds and communities will all need to use crafting to get access to the best gear. And this means as a crafter you might have more power and control within the community than you would normally get in this sort of game. Will you be using your skills to craft for the evil dominating empire of players? Or do you craft gear for those kind guilds who protect your resources and bring you materials for free? Do you use your unique crafting abilities to help those in need? Or will you use them politically in an effort to secure your position as town mayor? Ultimately, you decide. After all, that is what an MMORPG should be about. Its social aspects and the decisions you make should shape the world and the server you choose to play in, no matter how small the part you play. And as excited as I am for this game, I am somewhat sceptical on whether they will be able to make crafting as important as they claim, as many MMORPGs have tried and failed at this aspect in the past. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, and as always guys, thanks for watching.